Hello and welcome back again. So we are still in chapter one and now we move to section 0 0.2 using random numbers to ap approximate integrals and expectations. So in this section we shall uh, introduce the basic idea of Monte Carlo approximations of integrals. Okay, how can we use random numbers to approximate integrals? So let us restart by recalling a result in probability that if u is a continuous random variable with density f and g is a Borel measurable function such that g times f is summable, which means that the integral of the absolute value over r is finite, then the expectation of g of u is just the integral of over r of g of x times the density of u dx. So in particular, if you take g to be the identity, we get the expectation of u equal the integral of x f of x. This is a familiar uh, result. Okay. So in particular now, if we take u to be uniformly uh, distributed uh, over 0, 1. So it means that the density is the characteristic function of 0, 1. Then the expectation of g of u, <coughs> if g is summable, of course, is what? If g of is the integral of g times the characteristic function of 0, 1. And this gives us just the integral from 0 to 1 of g of x dx. Okay? So Suppose now that we want to approximate this integral. Okay, suppose that g is just a numerical function, which is summable on 0, 1, and you want to approximate this integral. Okay, so we do not by theta the value of the integral. Then the Monte Carlo method consists in two steps. In the first step, we write theta as an expectation of some random variable of g of u, okay, where u is uniformly distributed on 0, 1. And the next step, we use the law of large numbers, okay? So if you want, if you have a sequence of iid, independent and identically distributed random variables that are uniformly distributed on 0, not that 0, 1, we can put 0, 1 closed or open, doesn't really matter because when you integrate, uh, the integral doesn't change, actually. Okay, so if I have a sequence of uniformly independent random variables, then their images under G is also an IID sequence, right? And now the strong law of large numbers tells me what? It tells me that when n is large, when n tends to infinity, this quantity, this sequence, the sum of g of ui divided by the total numbers converges to the expectation of g of u, which is theta, which the value I need to approximate. Okay? So the idea is very simple. And we can propose the following algorithm, the Monte Carlo method for approximating the integral from 0 to 1 of a summable function, is first to generate a large number of IID uniformly distributed on 0, 1, okay? And then compute their mean, okay? When n is large, this is a good approximation of theta, of the integral, okay? So the idea is very simple. And if you want to compute other integrals, we can all, all, always assume that uh, we can always return to the case 0, 1, the integral of 0, 1, by a change of variable. So suppose you want to approximate the integral from A to B. Then by a change of variables, we can get back to the integral from 0 to 1 when you do this change of variables. Okay, so if you know how to compute or how to approximate this integral, we know how to compute to approximate this integral by a change of variables. We can also compute or approximate integrals over unbounded domains, like the integral from 0 to infinity of g of x. If we do the change of variables y equal 1 over 1 plus x, then we are 
we get back to the integral from 0 to 1 of a certain function, of a summable function. Okay? So, the first exercise I want you to do is to test this, this method to compute some familiar integrals whose, known, so whose exact value is known. Okay? So, start by taking... Uh, 100 sample, then 500, then 1,000, then 10,000. And so to compute or approximate, to see what happens in these particular cases. Okay, so this is just a test, actually. Okay? So I suggest that you pause the video and try to implement the Monte Carlo algorithm on your own. Okay? And in the next video, I will implement it myself. Okay. Now, more generally, if we have a multiple integral over an n cell, over a rectangle, if you like, the same idea applies. So, first we write the multiple integral of a summable function as an expectation, right? This also follows from the definition. And then we use the strong law of large numbers to approximate this expectation. Okay, so the same thing works. Okay, but now if you have a multiple integral, we have to generate not a vector of, uh, I, of uniform random numbers, but an array, a matrix. Okay, because we have, we have m variables here. So we have to generate m lists. Okay, now here n will go to infinity. M is just the dimension of the integral. It could be 2, 3, 4. Okay? So usually M is small and N is large. Okay? And we, we take the mean. Okay? So we, we generate this matrix of random numbers between 0 and 1. We take their image under G, the image of each list. And we compute the mean. And this number will be the Monte Carlo approximation of this multiple integral. Okay, so same idea works. Let us illustrate now the computation of pi by Monte Carlo. Okay, now of course you can write pi as a double integral if you like, but we don't need here to do. So, so consider the unit square 0, 1 times itself. And the quarter of a disk inside the circle. Okay. If we choose randomly a point inside the square, which is uniformly distributed, okay, what is the probability that the point will be in the green region, in the disk, the quarter of a disk? Of course, the answer is easy. It's just the area over D over the area of S which is just pi over 4 because the area of S is 1. Okay? So the theoretical probability of the random number being in the, in the green region is pi over 4. Okay? And now if you apply the strong law of large numbers, okay, or you just do uh, record the frequentest uh, interpretation of probability, what, what do we do? If you have a sequence of x n y n of independent points, if you like, in the square. We count what? We count. So, so imagine you are playing with the darts. So what do you do to compute pi over 4? You, you throw a large number n of darts, and you count the one which fell, which fell in the green region, and you call it m. Actually, uh, it's not the same m as before, OK? You can call it k if you like. And you, 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 you compute the ratio of how many points fell in the green region over the total number of rows. And this will be an approximation of pi over, of the theoretical probability. Okay? So, now we are going, so this is the algorithm. How do you compute pi? So, we, first you generate a large number of independent random couples, random uh, numbers or so which are independent and we count the number of indices 
such that xk squared plus y squared is less or equal than 1. So this means that xk, yk is in the disk. And then m over n will be the approximation of, of pi over 4. So 4m over n will be the Monte Carlo approximation of pi. So what you are going to do now, you will, you will start by trying at least, is to implement this algorithm to approximate pi, okay, in Python. And you have to take several choices on n, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on, to see how the approximation behaves, actually. This is just to give you an idea, a feeling of the Monte Carlo approximation of integrals. Okay? And when you do this exercise, you will notice that Monte Carlo methods are usually slow. Okay? So if you if your purpose is just to compute simple integrals, one-dimensional integrals, there are more efficient methods to compute that. So you have, for example, the trapezoidal rule, the Simpson rule for approximating line integrals. But however, when dealing with higher dimensional integrals, the Monte Carlo methods are usually more efficient than the numerical methods, okay, that you learn in numerical analysis, okay? And I have to mention, actually, that the Monte Carlo method was invented in the 40s by physicists working in the Manhattan Project in the United States. Okay, so they, they introduced the Monte Carlo method to approximate higher dimensional integrals, okay? And so this, this is all for this video, so a quick introduction to Monte Carlo idea. In the next video, I'm going to implement these, this algorithm to, uh, in Python, okay? So thank you for your attention.